Graham, good morning. Good to see you. Um, how was the squad? I thought it was a really positive night for you on Tuesday. Yeah, they're all fine. They're in a good place, hopefully. Um, hopefully we can continue that, maintain that. And uh, obviously that's what we're striving for. We're striving for that consistency. We're striving for that type of performance against a, a League One team the other night. So that would prove they're not a bad group of lads. Um, backs up what I've been saying all along. So, yeah, look, they're in a good place. And, and, and as you know yourself, um, what a win can do to a, to a team, to a club. Um, it, it picks everybody up, it gives everybody a lift and it just restores that little belief, little bit of belief that could have possibly been wavering a little bit over the last couple of weeks but it, it's, it's hopefully it's, it's restored a bit of belief and more importantly a little bit of confidence. Yeah and a clean sheet as well, must mean a lot to you as well. Yeah well there was, there was a couple of aims, we had a couple of aims, a couple of targets going into the game the other night and um, we spoke to the players about that, you know the win was important, the performance was important and, and, and let's, uh, let's, let's aim for clean, a clean sheet if we could. So uh, to get all three on one evening in one game is is is, uh, is unusual, but the lads uh, the lads produced, and uh, yeah, it's something we again. I think the key word today and this week has been build on it and and I'm more of the same place. And on Nathan Wood, you know, a, a nice moment for him to get that goal, and you know, it's been quite a, a, a career development for him since last year. I mean, just what, what have you made of his journey and where he can go to? Oh, it's been a brilliant story. It's it's been a great, uh, a great story. And normally, when you come across the lads who've, uh, who've, who've had a setback and then they go again, and uh, normally that hunger, that desire, and uh, Will Evans is, is is one. James Waite is another who come from uh, the. The Welsh Premier League, you know, they, they, it's it, they're great stories. They're absolutely brilliant stories, you know, and probably better them lads telling their story than me because uh, it, it, they're living it. They're, it's in their shoes. But yeah, I love seeing stories like that. I love seeing journeys like that, and uh, absolutely love working with, with not only Woody but the the, the lads even pre, prior to that Presley Farkhausen, you know. So the Welsh Premier League is an important um, league. It's an important. Um, scouting tool for us so uh, we we do do our work we do get out and watch games and uh, it's it's proved to be very very important for us over the last few years yeah we spoke to um, Craig Harrison in the summer when they played Cardiff and he said that that was something that was really important to those clubs as well in terms of having relationships I mean for you you've already shown me you've got those relationships but how important is it for clubs in Wales you know your Cardiffs your Swansea's yourselves and to, to not just to grow the league but give these players a chance to, to play professional football as well. Well these you gotta you gotta remember these lads some of these clubs are playing probably the one club every year they're playing in the, in Europe so um, you know that's 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 really really good experience um, we can't compete on an even playing field with a lot of other clubs, so we have to think outside the box. And the Welsh market is right on our doorstep, so naturally we're going to try and explore that. Naturally, we have eyes and boots on the ground to go and uh, attend games, and naturally we get a lot of feedback from a lot of fans from diff various different clubs. Um, I think the pre-season games and games during the season, i.e., we were up in Merthyr Tydfil there not so long back, and obviously the pre-season games and things like that. So building them relationships, having players in to have a little look at over the course of a week or two during the season is is important as well, and opening our doors for these clubs when the, when the games are not uh, on on a Saturday for whatever reason, we can open our doors for the clubs and and invite uh, players and, and and personnel from them clubs. I think it's a great uh, it's it's a great market. It's it's a really competitive league. And it's one I enjoy going to uh, going to watch, to be quite honest. And you mentioned Will in your previous answer, another goal for him the other night. And back in August, when he was started the season on fire, really, you were really strong in your uh, words of saying that he deserved a shot with Wales. You know, do you stand by that belief, given that he's continued it because you challenged him at the time to make sure it wasn't a flash in the pan, and, and he's proven already that he is still scoring goals, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I thought obviously the other night against against Gibraltar would have been a, a perfect window to have a to have a look. And look, at the end of the day, uh, I know Pagey, I know Jack, Jack Lester's gone in there to help and, and, and Alan Neil and that. So they're really good people and they know uh, they, they, they know what they're doing. So uh, yeah, look, I've just gotta, we've just got to keep Will going. Will's got to keep himself motivated and keep himself going. And, uh, and fingers crossed, maybe, maybe one day somebody will, uh, will take him in and we'll have a look at him and, and we'll show a little bit of faith in him. So um, yeah, we, we hope that, that, again, that would be another another uh, brilliant journey, another brilliant story uh, on, on a personal level for Will. It would also be a hell of an achievement for this football club. But yeah, I'm sure the lads are aware of him, I'm sure they know him and I'm sure they would have looked at him. And uh, like I say, if they if they need any further background or any further information on him, I'm sure they'll pick up the phone to us. But yeah, I would have, uh, 
I don't see any harm in, in chucking the league's top goal scorer in um, uh, into a game like that against Gibraltar. Just on this weekend, Graham Swindon, another tough test, pull your side that are realistically looking to challenge those playoff places. What do you make of the prospect that faces you tomorrow? Look, it's a massive challenge. It's a, it's, it's a big game. We're, we're underdogs. David and Goliath, call it what you want. There's three or four of their players that we looked to try and do something with in the summer, but we just couldn't get near them for, for various reasons. So, uh, yeah, look, they're, they're, they're flying. They're going well. They're scoring goals for fun. A real, real tough prospect at home as well. And we've got a good manager. So uh, it uh, makes for all the ingredients of obviously, uh, obviously a good game. It's, it's one we're looking forward to. Local, a local one. We should have a, a fair bit of backing as well from our from our fans who travel. So uh, yeah, you always look forward to the to the big games uh, when you're when you're a player, and I'm sure the lads are no different. You mentioned the close proximity of it there. I mean, I'm sure you will be backed by a good number of fans. But does the the Michael Flynn factor for this club maybe add a bit more for those fans as well? Well, I, I don't know. You'd probably have to ask uh, Michael, and you probably <coughs> have to ask the fans. But for me, certainly, the job Flynn done here was was tremendous. Um, he's a good man, good lad, I, I, I speak highly of him um, and I, I'm sure the fans do as well. Um, but I, I guess at 3 o'clock when everybody blows the whistle, I, I'm sure all that friendship goes out the window. Um, these fans want to see us win games of football, our players want to win and I'm sure Flinney wants to win as well. So um, yeah, look, quite rightly, he deserves all the applause that he gets for, for the job he's, he's done at this football club. Just on their goal threats, I mean, Jake Young, Dan Kemp, and then you're chucking at Charlie Austin, who's ex as experienced as he is. I mean, they've got a fair few options there, haven't they? Yeah, they do, yeah. Yeah, they've got really, really good uh, top range options. But I'll chuck Omar Bogle, I'll chuck Will Evans, and I'll chuck Caban Roy, and Nathan Wood. I'll chuck those at you and let them worry about us rather than us worry about them. Just find them, Team News, um, Aaron Wildig, how's he doing? Again, he'd be assessed this morning. We'll have a little look and see where he is. He's obviously come away with a, with a nasty wound to his head. He's had a couple of stitches, so um, we'll assess him this morning um, as, as per normal on a Friday morning, and we'll see where we are after that. Thank you, Graham. Brilliant, thank you. Young Corey coming onto the bench, obviously you wanted to get him on a Tuesday, but it didn't quite happen, did it, for, for the Aaron, Aaron reason. But what, what do you like about Corey? Um, He's Corey's a good player. He gives us he gives us some options. He can he can he can fill in at and in one or two different positions. He's uh, he's got that bit of pace. He's got that bit of hunger, that desire. Um, he's very raw, very young, very inexperienced. Um, but he's he's equipped himself very very well with us over the course of the last few months of training. And that was part and parcel of the reason for these occasions. And um, was part and parcel of the reason why we took uh, four or five of the lads with us over the course of pre-season. They completed the pre-season with us, so, so the thought process there was, was long term and, and, and getting them in around us and to see where they were. And those of the, the, There's a few that had fallen by the way, so there's a few that hung in there and stuck in with us. And Corey was one of the lads who stuck in with us, he, 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 didn't, uh, he didn't fade away. So um, yeah, he's a, he's a good kid, he's a good kid, massive, massive talent, um, a, a massive, massive learning curve, long way to go. But again, like I say, he possibly should have had um, an, an opportunity to get on the pitch the other night um, and, and get it, make a debut. And, and you, your message with the young lads has been consistent throughout, isn't it? You're not giving them away, it needs to be earned. And also, it, it is dangerous, isn't it? Just say, for the sake of filling a seven-man bench with young lads, if they're not ready, it's it, it can be a hindrance to them in the long term, can't it? Well, you, you, you've got to earn. Um, this club is built, and, and if the young lads, the, the young lads just don't need to look too far. They just look at the DNA of this football club. Um, you, you, you're given nothing. You, nobody hands us anything. We have to fight and scrap and battle tooth to nail for everything we get. And yeah, there's there's an easy way out. We can just put names on a team sheet for uh, for the sake of filling a team sheet. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to earn things, and every player in that changing room earns the right to be on that team sheet. They earn the right Monday to Friday. They've earned the right throughout their career, and it's it's great looking at these kids. They've got targets. They've got opportunity. They've got chance. We do take them across and and, and try and try them with them, and get them in amongst us as much as we possibly can. But again, they have to be up to the standard, and they have to. Uh, I suppose when I was a young lad as well, going back to you know, Jesus, going back many months, I suppose you have to earn the respect of the first team dressing room. It's okay coming in and and, and, and sitting in and chatting and, and speaking and, and all that, but it's when you go out on the grass, 
you've got to earn the respect of the first team, uh, the first team management, and the first team players. More importantly, those lads that you're you, you come, uh, you're training with, um, and if you earn them respects, you're you, you're halfway, uh, you're halfway there. So, yeah, a lot of them have had, a, had opportunity. A lot of them will have opportunity. There's a couple of really good prospects in there that uh, I'd like to see the development over the next six to twelve months. Um, see how they are, see how they come along. And there is opportunity and chance, and I will present opportunity and chance to, uh, I've said that all along, to the young lads, but they've got to be ready, they've got to be up to it, and they've got to be showing on a daily basis. Um, and I keep banging on about their gym work, their gym programs, because League Two is a physical league. League One is a physical league. The Championship, the Premier League, football is a physical game nowadays although you wouldn't have thought so looking at some of the decisions but they have to be physically ready and the technical side of the game we can look after as well we can develop them and coach them up as we are doing with the likes of Kibban, Nathan Wood, James Wade, Will Evans and, and so forth. And um, regard to Swindon, uh, is there a bit of a different a change of mindset with how you're approaching things um, you're looking to create? You mentioned those goal threats you've got whereas last season when you first came in especially it was you know let's get back to basics let's, let's Really, it's partly through personnel necessity, I guess, isn't it? That you you're trying to be more on the front foot. Well, we are on the front foot. We are playing. We are obviously out with last Saturday's first half performance. Um, last Saturday, we had to probably find a different way with the the low block that Harrogate came with. We had to probably go over or around. But um, the 99% of our games this season, you, you, you've seen some some quick, fast combination play, and, and you've seen some a lot of switches of play and. A, a lot of good, good football, um, entertaining football, which, which I, I, I really enjoy watching the lads. Last year was a bit of a gruel, a bit of a toil, but we had to do what we had to do last year. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoy watching the lads now, um, and, and at times we are, uh, to, probably to our detriment, we are open, we are expansive, we are spending a lot of time in the opposition's box, in the opposition's house, we are creating a lot of chances. Um, but I suppose getting the other side of it, uh, you mentioned the word basics. I'm not quite sure we have the basics correct and that we have the basics right at this moment in time. We're still shipping and making some silly, silly errors, shipping some silly goals. So the basics, if I could get a touch of last year, implemented into the team this year, into um, obviously a new system, a new way of playing and, and, and a creativity that we have available to us, the goals that we have available to us, I think we'd be, uh, we'd be well on our way.